Joel Ward. I'm the director of exhibitions at Calvin College. I want to welcome you here. This is Artist in Conversation. Uh, and uh, we're going to be having a conversation with uh, Sandra Bowden, who collection is in this gallery, the Ruro Collection. And Sandra is an artist and a collector uh, as well. We'll be having uh, Fuchi, and uh, she gave an excellent talk this morning on his work, which is in that gallery. Um, and uh, if, if you missed it, uh, he's more than happy, I think, to uh, talk about, talk with his work with you. Uh, he also has some posters he uh, is willing to uh, sign and sell after this talk. Uh, so I'd invite you to, uh, to listen to the conversation between these artists uh, and to uh, ask questions. Uh, we'll take questions. Do you want to take questions during or after? The... I don't think that we can handle being interrupted. Can you, can you handle it? No. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. So, yeah, do you want to start that, Sandra? Yeah, we need, to, we need to sit facing somebody, or how are we going to do this? Um, because I'm going to ask okay. my chief questions and hope that he answers, and then we'll flow out of that. Do you want me to, uh, would you like a chair here? Do you want to stand here, Sandra? And then would you like a chair? Yeah. Or would you like to stand here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll just tell you, I have a few images that will show along the way, but I'm really the catalyst to get to talk for us. <laughs> um, you know, it's a real privilege to have him here and for us to have this opportunity to have this exchange. Um, I've had a good time studying about you and learning about your background, and I heard a little bit of this talk this morning. It's really remarkable, and it's of particular interest to me at this point in my life, because I just finished researching and writing, um, curating a, um, an exhibition on Sarah Watanabe and overseeing the production of a book. And that was inaugurated in the fall at Billy Graham Museum. And um, there's so many parallels between these two men's life that, you know, I hope we can flesh out a bit here today. But, Chi, I want to say to you that you are a wonderful example of an artist that has struggled artistically and theologically to share the gospel to a world that needs to know Christ. And uh, what is remarkable about you as an artist is that you have not come from the typical Western in our Christian environment, you have emerged out of communist China with a vibrant man, a vision of the Bible to share with your culture and the world, culture and the world. You have found a way to create a modern Chinese Christian art that helps communicate the message of the Bible beyond the typical Western boundaries by using traditional Chinese um, painting techniques and with um, the Western art of Middle Ages and modern times blended together. Your art communicates universally, so it goes far beyond his own borders. And, you know, I don't know, I haven't talked to you about this, but Watanabe's work was far more received outside of his own country than in Japan. And um, you certainly have a great respect in the United States, so it'll be interesting to ask about that, too. I am thankful for your calling and also for your obedience to follow that calling. Because it isn't easy, for, even in our country, to be an artist and to be a Christian, or to be an artist who works with biblical subject matter. That's not easy. Put that in the context of China, or Japan, or another culture, and um, one needs to be really applauded for staying the course to do that. Chi, I want to ask you, first of all, how did you become an artist? Thank you, I'm already standing in the center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, this morning I mentioned, uh, when I was a teenage boy, cultural revolution happened. My family background, my father, he was a famous uh, mathematician, a professor in Nanjing University. He had a dream, maybe only me, a clever boy, could continue to take this job as the next very famous mathematician. 
Yeah, but if I I become a mathematician, maybe Carmen College is more interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> then uh, cultural revolution may happen. I was sent to the countryside as a teenage boy, as a student of a high school, middle school student, I was sent to the countryside. But I, I, I was a very clever boy. I wanted to, every day I, I was thinking, looking for something I can. I could do to let me avoid such very hard labor in the field as a teeny boy. So I finally I found if I can do painting, to paint China Mouse portrait, I can, that would be lucky, you know. It's everywhere, every corner in China during that time, people worship China Mouse. Even in the rural area, they will build an office to ask someone to paint China Mouse, people standing around. Chan Mao's portrait, Lamy, Chan Mao, everything. So it's a, the, the first step. I, I learn fine art, <laughs> but not, not, not real, realize that I will become an artist. I just want to avoid hard labor work. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not well, you know, that's not so different on campus, because you know, on campus, everybody looks at the art students as having easy work. <laughs> There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, did you study art? Uh, I, yeah, at that, since that time, I, because I was lucky, I had a very good labor uh, in the city, Nanjing, a famous uh, a fine art educator, a professor in Sibai. Uh, he, he was a dean of Nanjing Normal University, and when he was young, he studied art in Paris, in France. Very impressed. Impressed fire, yes, from uh, his hometown. <laughs> from hometown, very, yeah, impressed in fire. And he, he, he uh, uh, I did play outside with some other kids, and uh, I met him. He, he, he told me, Chi, come follow me. Then I followed him to his private <laughs> home. He told me, he showed me some wonderful artworks, paintings, colorful. I really enjoy it. Yes, I do, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Just follow me to study art. No more useful to follow your father to study mathematics. No? Just follow <laughs> 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 He said, you are very clever. You will become, if you follow me to study art, you will be, become the next famous artist. Yes. How did your father feel about that? No way. My father was, uh, his university was closed. Yeah, even he was into the factory to oh, labor. Yeah. Uh, no idea, no choice. Yeah. So that was part of the, the cultural revolution, that he lost his job and yeah. had to do labor. So many years later, uh, the, uh, the reporter from Hong Kong, uh, the Far East Economic Review, and he, he did an interview, and the family decided, he, you become a Christian artist, you become an artist, you need to say, thanks, Chen I said, what? He sent you to the countryside, then you choose your family to study art. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. uh, very hard uh, to labor work as a teenage boy. Yeah, sent to the countryside, very rural area, very cold, yeah, very, oh, very hard. Yeah, I just want to let me escape. Yeah, to avoid such very hard labor in the field. Yeah, this is the reason. Uh, then step by step, I, I become an artist. <laughs> well, we're glad. <laughs> now, I read that Raphael's Madonna and Child was instrumental in your attraction to Christianity. Tell us about this piece, and tell us the story of how you became a Christian. Um, you know, uh, I studied art for my neighbor, uh, Professor Li Sibai, and I need to borrow some of his old art magazine back to the field. And the one magazine, the cover, dropped this man on the same image. Mm -hmm. Very much my art. So peaceful. <coughs> yeah, you can imagine during Cultural Revolution, every minute in China, people fighting against criticize. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's hard to find a peaceful message. Because this is the first time I saw the 
Madonna only baby Jesus, so smiling, so peaceful. So in the daytime, I paint my mom. In the midnight, back home, I paint my dog. Share with my friends. Share a peaceful message. Yeah, this is the first time I come across, yeah, through visual art to, to you know, oh, this is a Christian face, Christian image. See, I love the story because it's an image that led one to, to the Lord. And uh, St. Francis, do you know the story of St. Francis? He fell down before the, the crucifix in the church in Assisi and bowed down and um, promised to follow the Lord. Um, I wish I could remember the whole phrase, show me thy perfect will, O Lord. And, and the same experience, it was an image that was the instrument of his conversion. Boy, as an artist, that, that's really powerful. <laughs> you all need to know that. I, I, I went to Assisi. Yes. To see this yes. Francis. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, uh, uh, I did a copy. Okay. Uh, yeah, many years ago, during the Cultural Revolution, oh. uh, early beginning of the 1970s. It's very beautiful. Uh, I saw it projected this morning. Uh, I, I, mean, I copy many copies. Yeah, this is my younger sister is to correct this. I copy. <laughs> Well, um, she, I know that, well, tell it, you know, you didn't answer, oh, oh, I did something wrong here. Where's my tie -dye? You told us your first influence, but what were other steps that began to unravel or reveal the gospel to you, to reveal Christ to you? Yeah, this is the first time I, I, I realized this is a Christian uh, message. Uh, through this rough first painting, mm -hmm. and in the in the, in the countryside, you know, uh, my old uh, classmates uh, in the same to the different uh, villages, but sometimes they were came to visit. Uh, so the one 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 night, uh, 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 one of my classmates came to visit me, and he saw my picture. He told me, "This is a Christian image." Mm -hmm. Um, he came from a Christian family. But uh, uh, he never told his <coughs> classmates before. You, you know, in, in China, during the uh, Cultural Revolution or before Cultural Revolution, it's very dangerous. Even the Christian family, the parents, they were nervous, hesitant to, 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 to provide uh, Christian education for the kids. If the kids went to school, make announcement. They came from a Christian family. Big problem. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. People were, oh, you came from a Christian fa family, your parents or your grandparents maybe did some terrible work linked with American imperialism. Yeah, missionary, Western missionaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 1949, the so all Western missionaries went back home. So, uh, but he <coughs> told me, this is a Christian image, and he sing a, a beautiful song. I still remember uh, uh, Saint Maria, and also the second song is Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. he sing the song. He learned it from his parents in a private home, and he did not, yeah, hear this beautiful song in our class. Yeah, but this the first time I saw boy very. Peaceful. Yeah, the Christian song was very peaceful. Christian art, visual art, very so peaceful. I just, I need a peaceful message. You know, during Cultural Revolution, yeah, so it's, 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 it's terrible. I could not mention yet to talking about it. Yeah, so I, I, uh, the Chinese New Year coming, I went back to China, uh, in my city, Nanjing. Uh, it's a former Catholic city of China, Catholic Nanjing. Nanjing is uh, South Chinese character. And since 1949, uh, the Catholic city moved to Beijing. Beijing is North, Northern Catholic, <coughs> before Nanjing, Southern Catholic. So there, there was a Catholic church, St. Paul Church in the city. I came to, I want, eagerly want to see the church, but the church was closed. Uh, I was standing outside the windows and looking at what inside. All the machines, 
looks like a factory, oh, all the wow. machines. So it's very disappointing. Yeah, then I went to so this the rock cemetery. The, the, the cemetery was occupied by the operation, the great parts. They kept water there. Yeah, the, the, the people just uh, told me uh, some months ago the the the, 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 the people coming here the revolution for the revolution they they collect all the uh, biblical uh, Bibles and the biblical uh, theological uh, studies books and put outside the library the big fire on yeah. wow. uh, this one. It's it's very hard to find a, a real Christian message to be in the revolution. But the one is the most important peaceful message through the Bible. And like today uh, to uh, worship Sunday morning in a church, people shaking hands, peace be with you. So this is the most important message. So most of my art still yeah. I just want to share the peaceful message. Yeah, he shared that this morning that he had three goals and one of them was that his art be permeated with a sense of peace. And so this is, this made you, you understand it much more deeply by hearing you tell us that. Um, so at some point, you committed to being a Christian. And then, uh, you must have gone off to school, but eventually you went to the university in Germany. Am I right? Uh, actually, I... I studied our fine art first in Nanjing Normal University, fine art department. Well, I, I, I went there to study my, my labor, uh, the formal dean, before mm -hmm. I, I come in. He suicide himself mm -hmm. because I don't know uh, the end of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. Uh, so many tragedies happened. Then uh, after I finished my study, I went to Tibet. So you can get some to uh, see some um, Tibetan influence, oh, okay. I really enjoy. And then I back to Nanjing, teaching them at Nanjing Theological Seminary. Then I, I continue to study art history in Nanjing Art Institute. Yeah. Okay. And then I got a master's degree and also I, as a candidate for PhD in art history. Then I got a scholarship in Germany, Hamburg Art Institute. How old were you at this time? I... I forgot. Conveniently, I said. You were in your 20s? Yeah, you were. Yeah. Then I got a scholarship to study media art in Hamburg Art Institute to, to study. To, uh, my, my professor, uh, uh, he was uh, the dean of uh, director of Hamper Art Art Museum. Yeah, if we we each week I went to his office discussing about uh, e art, uh, talking about uh, art pieces. She come follow me. Oh. Then uh, we went to the museum. Yes, and lots of uh, medieval art was here. We just discussing about. Yeah. Now that the study of medieval art, you know, I did it. I could spot a few things. Take a look here. <laughs> Can you see the similarities? That's a sculpture from uh, the down in the lower corner. That's a sculpture from the Atun Cathedral in, in France. Yeah, France. And um, look, do you see the parallels? Now, I could have put another image there of Sada Watanabe's, and he was influenced from this exact piece. Mm -hmm. um, the wise men resting with an angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 um, um, she tell us what what spoke to you from the medieval um, approach? What spoke because it definitely influenced you. What what speaks out of those that time period's work? I mean, I have a little theory that I'll share with you. But I, don't know. I actually uh, I wrote a book introducing medieval art. Uh, so important uh, in, in Chinese uh, in art college, 
uh, teaching uh, art history, Western mm -hmm. art history, uh, the professor always uh, interesting to introduce uh, ancient Greek and Roman art. Mm -hmm. Then later on, Renaissance. So that between 1,000 years, medieval time, nothing about the Dark Age, you know, the Christianity, so no words. But I, I do think it's very, very important for for Chinese scholar, Chinese art students to learn more about medieval art. Yeah, I, I know last century, uh, the very, very important uh, article introduced in medieval art yeah, to express a spiritual. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for modern art, reformation is very, very important. Yeah. Um, do you know who Jane Dillenberger is? Yeah. Jane Dillenberger? And um, oh, can somebody help me remember a husband's name? John, yeah. John Dillenberger, two very famous art historians that were from the San Francisco area. And James, in Jane's book, she talks about medieval art as a time of abstraction. And they are abstract. There's a, there's a caricatureness about it. There's a distortion. And that any time in our history where there was this abstraction and distortion, it was really dealing deeply with spiritual issues. Mm -hmm. And when it moved to the Renaissance and it was much more realistic, then it was dealing with, really with um, man, not the spiritual. So it's an interesting perspective. So I'm not surprised that she found inspiration in that medieval work because when I go to a museum, I was just at the Louvre last week, and um, everybody was hurrying out, and I was caught in the medieval section, and I was almost glued to the pieces. I didn't want to leave, but I knew I had to. But there's something that resonates so deeply, because it did have to do with worship. It had to do with finding ways to communicate the Bible to each person who was there. They didn't read. So they had to, how do you find ways to communicate visually um, now, part of the medieval uh, interest stained uh, glass. is stained glass. This happens to be from Sharp. And um, I, the interesting thing, this exhibition, which I'll talk about tonight, George Rouault's work, he was definitely influenced from stained He actually worked in a stained glass factory. He worked on, this is from Sharp, he worked on restoring some of the windows at Sharp. There's outlines around his work. Well, I don't know if this is the same. I find that with some of yours, too. See if I've got one here. No, it's water not. Let's go back one or two. There's, it did, that, did the stained glass in any way impact you? Did it help you find yeah. part of your vision? I came to visit the UK, uh, York Minster. Mm -hmm. I met the master, uh, with, uh, Peterson, very famous uh, expert, yeah, re reproducing, uh, repair the medieval art, uh, oh, okay. medieval stand, uh, we, uh, we stand stand up there. Mm -hmm. there. We had very interesting talking about that. I, I was a fan of medieval uh, stained glass. Yeah, stained glass is very colorful, yeah, spiritual, yeah, different. The sunshine, yeah, that I went to Paris and uh, Notre Dame uh, twice. The first time in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, the rose finger is faced to the west. <coughs> so the evening, I went mean, again to see. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I do appreciate the stained glass very well. Well, I, I think that Chi's work radiates that light that is very similar to a stained glass. Um, and I think for some uh, who are not skilled at reading art, Knowing that it has that sensibility may help you enjoy the piece too. So. Yes, thank you. Um, now, while you were studying in Germany, you must have come in contact with all sorts of artists. Who were the artists that impacted you the most? When you mean I studied in Germany? When you were studying in Germany, but my, uh, my study in Germany uh, focused on uh, during uh, Middle Age, yeah. how the Romanesque art, mm -hmm. the first international art style, could ex 
for us out of the whole European countries. The, the, the main reason is the way of St. James, the picker to the span, the St. Diago, the Campsula, the St. Jacob's way, very, very important. That is my, my dissertation. Yeah, at that time, it's uh, just happened <coughs> uh, yeah, because the uh, European the Council of Europe and the headquarters in uh, Strasbourg, they want to make a decision to use a whole European market to use uh, the same uh, uh, Euro uh, mm -hmm. currency. That's before, they, they just had, uh, they made a dis discussion. They invite some historic economy to give some reason why our Western uh, European countries could do cooperation in the market. Yeah, so the, the, the historians said the way of St. James, the bigger So I was interested in so the art, church, architecture, buildings, the, the Romanesque, Romanesque, you know, Romanesque, yes. yeah, before Gothic. Well, that was the, yeah. a tomb was Romanesque, right? And no, 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 the standard is Gothic. Yeah, this is Gothic. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 this the, the is high The sculpture was yes. Romanesque, right? Yeah. So I did my research just for the But were there years. any contemporary artists in Europe at the time that you appreciated? I appreciate uh, Michael Chagar and, uh, and uh, Picasso uh, and Ward also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are <coughs> uh, the oil painting piece in the art history in Minneapolis. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. almost each month I come and they have to see. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. There's, there's usually, the, most every major museum in the United States has a piece of it, so it will be a painting, at least. Um, well, you know, I see that, see this, this is a piece that's down further. You can see it in Rouault's work, there's that stained glass impact. I think uh, there's a lot of relationship in terms of color, etc. There's what? There's a, uh, yes, that's similar. That's one that's from the Miserere series, and this is a larger one that he did. Um, oh, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm all about now. Um, what, what I would like to know, how did you develop your stuff? You know, it's, you see one of your paintings, we know it's yours. If I see a Rouault, I know it's Rouault. If I see a Chagall, I know it's Chagall. So you have a style. How did that develop? Yeah, actually, um, uh, I got the uh, first influence by Chinese folk art. I was in the countryside. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I learned something from the local uh, uh, paper carton, we call it paper carton, mm -hmm. for the local people. But each, uh, every uh, New Year, Chinese New Year, they uh, use uh, oh, this yeah. paper, paper, paper cartons uh, to mount on windows. Okay. Or celebrating Chinese New Year, even for wedding. So, so you can see the uh, the eyes always think <laughs> this year on. This is paper cutting style. And, oh. Yeah, and, and also you know in, in China uh, for Chinese art history, there are two different direction. What one is we call. Chinese scholar painting. Chinese scholar painting the uh, landscape, the mountain, the bamboo, black and white, no color, the brush and pink and water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a Chinese uh, Chinese uh, corner in the Metropolitan Museum. You can see the you know, black and white right. mountain. This is a Chinese scholar painting based on Zen religion. Zen. Zen is uh, Indian Buddhism. Right. Mixed with Chinese toys, then the Chinese uh, uh, the scar. Yeah, so since Tang Dynasty, the middle of Tang Dynasty, the, for Chinese scholar first they choose Confucianism. So the reading book, reading many 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 books, then passed the official examination. If good, yeah, if very good, very done, they will have a chance to to enter official circuit. 
yeah, to, to become a very important man, to conquer the power. So, but sometimes if you lose the position, the official position, then they choose Chen. Like a little bit of Tang Dynasty, Wang Wei, very famous. First time, choose Confucianism. Then he became a very, very important man, the vice premier of the central government. But some, uh, one, one, just one year, he was involved in the political yeah, troubles. He was sent to the prison, jail. Then after three or five years, he escaped up from the uh, prison. No more interesting real world. Back to the eye up to the mountain, bamboo, the water. Yeah, his poem and his his landscape. No color. Wow. Yeah, the color is the, the real world. Very colorful. What's the for Chinese color painting? The hit color. <laughs> yeah, no more color. But you got lots of color. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like this kind of okay. <laughs> but Christian artist uh, got creation very colorful world. <laughs> and Jesus said, let become the light of the world. Mm. Yeah, very colorful. Right? So the, another another direction is Chinese four parts. Chinese minority people. Uh -huh. Yeah, I spent three years in Tibet. Blue sky. Yeah, the golden look of the Nama temples, the people decorate. Decoration, the clothes, very colorful. And the South best part of China, the people, the minority people, uh, Miao and Tu Jia, and many minority people, dressing very colorful. I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So this, this is, a, 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 looks like a Central American people. Yeah, very, right. very colorful. And also, I, 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 first time I follow uh, professor in my neighborhood, he gave very interesting impression style, French. Which is called? Impression, very colorful. Mm -hmm. So my, I got influence in my traveling around the world over 30 different countries. Yeah, so I, I just enjoy colorful, <laughs> contemporary <laughs> modern art. Yeah, and four cards, also. What is the painting process that you use? Um, I'm using a uh, Chinese brush and ink. I'm using a uh, Korean rice paper. I'm using Japanese uh, called Sakura postcard gouache. Oh, gouache. Okay. Or orange. Yes. No, Asian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a. Uh, now, is the paper black? Is no, the paper dark underneath, uh, or do you color white. it white? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I paint the ink and the brush on the. Back of the recipe on the back. Oh, and it yeah, bleeds the, through. The, 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 the duck, the ink, I put on the back of the recipe. Yeah. After dry, I, I continue putting the color in front of the recipe. And after, continue after dry. Gosh. <laughs> this people are very ugly. Uh, I cannot <laughs> demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> then I finally, I, uh, I, I, at that, that stage, I need to uh, ask my uh, former, uh, yeah, now master in Nigeria City. Uh, he can help me to mount. He will put another rice paper on the back of of this rice paper. Oh, to laminate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the mount on the wall. Okay. And keep waiting over one week after dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cut during the back and keep doing some part. Then I did bring to Minneapolis to scan, mm -hmm. so to do my uh, GK prints. So all my artwork mm -hmm. is put here on GK prints. This is an American technique. Yes, it's it's pretty pretty. Now, the, uh, your paper has turned black because you have painted it from behind. Yeah. The lines that we see of black yeah. were did you just not paint on those areas, or did you add black on the surface afterwards, or a combination of that? Yeah, uh, the first time I, I'm using that brush, you know, it's all time. But 
often as a process in my painting, you know, the color and the pink on the back and the color in the front, and some disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's okay. It, it, it's okay. Some, 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 some part we can see the, the outline, but some maybe disappeared. But it's, it's okay. Those are called accidentals. <laughs> <laughs> We celebrate accidents. <laughs> <laughs> so you have you seen the Los Angeles uh, pre dancing body? Yeah. 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 Dancing body, the angel. From They're not just sitting at the table. Yeah, yeah, dancing body. I don't know how to play it. <laughs> yeah, body. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me, um, how. How does a new image emerge? How, how, what's the, what's the, happens from uh, conception to actually the birth of a new piece? Um, it's, it's very hard to say. In the recent three years, I just concentrated to, to read my book, okay. my Christian art history book, including Chinese Christian art history, Asian Christian art history, from ancient Roman catacomb to medieval art and contemporary church building, different architecture style, and the book will be published just on the process. Uh, will be published in Beijing, National uh, Radio. Uh, Is that in Chinese? Chinese. No more. You're going to have to translate it. <laughs> 1200 pages. <laughs> I have uh, <coughs> some new paintings. I've already made <coughs> sketches. Yeah. And my, my art style uh, always sometimes a different period, a little bit changed. Like Picasso changed seven times. <laughs> yeah. My, my style has changed a few times too. I but, but I will not follow Picasso. He, he, he changed the seven wipes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were um, just in Israel with our grandchildren, and we visited a cave where um, the shepherds could have possibly kept sheep. This is a huge cave. Maybe some of you have been there, but it's a huge cave on the side of the hills where it's thought that shepherds would have kept their sheep or possibly even where the birth of Christ had taken place. And in our, we went with our four grandchildren. We just returned last week. And so this is fresh in my mind. But what, and that evening, one of the evenings, we had a conversation about what could it look like None of the paintings we've ever seen reflect this um, possible physical reality. And um, what does that mean? For, for us, in our time period, we are so concerned about being authentic. And you know, so um, what do we do about all the artwork that's been produced over the centuries that has nothing to do with the landscape, the geography, the, the clothing, et cetera, of the time of Christ's birth. I mean, of course, even if we put the nativity in this setting, we can't be sure that that was the reality. But I want us to think just a minute about how for centuries people have taken, and, and I'm coming up to Chi with this. Here is Hans Memling, 1400s. He has done a nativity, he's Dutch. It's all the trappings of how a Dutch person at the time would have imagined the wise men coming. Now remind you, they would not have been to Israel like we just did. They didn't have photographs that would have floated out of the Holy Land and come to them. They had to envision this setting, this event in the light of their own culture. So they did. So didn't uh, Fabriano in Italy. Uh, these wise men have come with all the regalia that Italy could possibly offer. And then, because we begin to Watanabe lately, here's his, son, uh, his Watanabe's for them. They are dressed in kimonos. 
Mm -hmm. The wise men come dressed in kimonos. It was Japanese. I came to visit his private studio in Tokyo. Yeah, thank you, Mary. And then the next piece. <laughs> oh, I know the artist. <laughs> You know, this is liberating for all of us because when we even tell the story to our children, to our grandchildren, it's always in the light of our own personal world. So this is what artists have done. This is what you've done. Tell us about this piece. The, 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 uh, the boy, Jesus, holding an iPhone. <laughs> and the iPhone means original sin, single of original sin. And you know this story? Mm -hmm. And but Jesus, he was born. He wanted to redeem people living in the world. Not just holding people's original sin. But he did not eat. Like I will come here, like it. Yeah. Just holding. Just holding. Yeah. And the three gifts. The, the, the Yang Sao, the pottery. The three gifts presented by the three kings. Uh, Almost 6,000 years ago in the uh, Yellow River, uh, yeah, yeah, so this is a Qing, uh, this is a blue uh, bronze, uh, Qing, Qing Tong Qi, uh, Sun Dynasty, about over 3,000 years ago. Yeah, th th this is a brand new, yeah. Uh, <laughs> This this uh, porcelain uh, gave very strong influence to British people. Yeah, in the 18th, uh, 17th century, the British people coming to China. British people interested in drinking tea. Yeah, so they call chi China. China means not real Chinese meaning, the central kingdom of the world. China just the, the porcelain for drinking tea. Or British people think about this very good, very clever <laughs> people making porcelain. Yes. So if, if you come to visit the UK, you can find some this kind of style. So that's sure. a British style. Mm -hmm. You've got some influence. Mm -hmm. So looking at those four that we've just seen, um, I mean, I summarize my thoughts. Oh gosh, how wonderful it was. Uh-oh, we have a helper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's back on. Oh, it's on my computer. Yeah, yeah but it's not here. We've got a disconnect. In the meantime, somebody come to help us. Um, in the light, though, that all these centuries have found ways to communicate the story of the Bible, that's what you've done with your work. Am I right? You've, you've tried to find your own way to communicate to your people, to, to live out of what's in you. Share a little bit about this. Yeah, the, the two. Uh, the first is, uh, as a Christian artist, I, I, I just want to share a peaceful message. So the gospel message is the most important, peaceful message. Yeah, we're shaking hands in church on Sunday morning, peace be with you. So this is the most important uh, for me, for sharing peaceful message. In the 1990s, I, I, you know, uh, for Chinese economic developed so quickly since the uh, middle of the 1990s. I, I quite often got some um, telephone call to my old classmates that study art and invite me to join the project. To, to, to do some decoration for the five star hotel uh, uh -huh. business building. If you join this project, you will become quickly become rich. But I always say life is too short. I can only concentrate. You can't become rich. It's too short. short. <laughs> 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 yeah. Be a bit hard. I can only focus on this. Right. Yeah. And also at that time, if you do uh, Christian artworks, you cannot accept by 
by the society at that time, you know. Where sometimes See, they this, this is the calling. Yeah. This is the calling. This is the sacrifice. Uh, and not only a sacrifice, the great privilege. They're, they're really one. They're, they're one and the same. It's a being obedient to what the Lord wants you to do. I'm thankful for that. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> peaceful messages in my artworks with more and more people here in the world. Yes. Now, another question I had a picture, but it doesn't matter because they've seen Watanabe. You saw Watanabe's work with the kimonos. On. I read that you knew Watanabe and had met him. Yeah. Well, Tell us about that. Uh, you know, the first time in uh, 1980. Uh, I know that in the street, 83, the first time I came to uh, uh, Nanjing in uh, the Rock in uh, seminar, I was a teacher. Um, then professor, uh, uh, Masao Takanaka, a Japanese professor, very famous, founder of Asian Creation Art Association. Mm -hmm. He came to this seminar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he Give a very interesting talk uh, for my students, and he gave me uh, uh, two art books, yeah, including the uh, Arabic art books there. I was very surprised by seeing one Arabic work. This is my first year to uh, teach at Nanjing Art Seminary. I did not realize that the indigenous Christian art how developed in Asia, because before Cha. China always closed its door. Yeah, we did not realize what happened outside China. Even Fanny Gong too, many new informations yeah, happened. Churches, but we did not realize. So this is very, very important for uh, uh, Masao Tsukunaga, his visit in Nanjing. And also, uh, he uh, gave me some uh, Asian Christian Art Association, the image, you know, the, the magazine. Oh, the image magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Greg Each, Wolf's magazine. Yeah, yeah, always sent to me. And he invited me to come to visit Japan. And I met Watanabe in Tokyo. And also, I, 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 I was very interested in uh, Watanabe's work. And I recommend Chinese church to invite him to come to visit. So in 1987, Watanabe came to my seminar in Nanjing. He gave a talk. I also invite some professor and arts uh, graduate students from many art institutes to come to our seminar to listen to Watanabe's talk. And I wrote an article and published the, the, the art magazine introducing Watanabe's art. I do appreciate it. So, Their I, paths are so similar. Watanabe converted from Buddhism to Christianity, <coughs> and everybody said you can't do it. You can never make a living. But he was obedient to that call and did only that, you know, all his life. And of course, his reward is, you know, he's in the Vatican, he's in the National Gallery, you know, he's all those places. And um, I just wondered if his example in any way was an encouragement to you. Yeah, that's true. I just followed him. That's very sad. Very sad. He, he, he passed away. Yeah, in 1996. 96, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm still alive. Uh, that's the most important. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question for you. Um, this symposium is really aimed at helping congregations with their worship. And. Um, one of the things that I've been interested in, and actually Calvin College was instrumental in that 32 years ago for me. But I began the journey of really devoting my life to helping the church reclaim the territory of the visual arts, to embrace it again, and to use it as a way to minister, as a way to grow spiritually, as a way to enjoy life, etc. And um, I know that this symposium is interested not just in the production of artwork and our stories, but how can, how would you like to see your art used in worship settings or part of worship? Or have you even thought of that or explored that? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For church bulletin, for uh, church uh, congregation, uh, they had uh, annual conference uh, using my artworks. They did banners. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I'm happy to share my artworks. Yeah. I'm all Christian. I'm so, so happy, you know. Yeah, art is very, very important because artists always do very just based to the canvas, based to the paper, solitary. No people could dialogue. So some artists crazy. Like Vincent van Gogh cut his ear. Yeah, like monk. You know, waiting artist? Yeah, much. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, many. So it's, it's good when the artist is here alive. This work could be appreciated and uh, sharing with people. So last year I got an uh, honorary doctor degree in the Australian Catholic University. So I addressed it for, for the uh, reception. I said many, many thanks. Your uh, university gave me an uh, honorary doctor degree for the artist. For the artist to arrive. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I know the, the Broadway show, is he died? A French painter, uh, Miller, the 19th century. Oh, Jean Francois Miller. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He, 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 his painting is very good, but he could not sell his paintings in the market. Mm -hmm. So his friends made, uh, uh, moved him to a village and uh, put uh, information in a newspaper in Paris. A famous artist, Miller, he just passed away. There are only a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the collector is coming soon. <laughs> only a few pieces now. <laughs> the collector. <laughs> but Miller still alive, stay in the vintage, <laughs> keep doing his artworks. And some months later, this big discovery, we found a new Miller's <laughs> painting. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, yeah, the, the, the university gave me an honorary doctor for artists. The artists, you are right. I think this is out of print, but I found it on Amazon. I found two or three copies. Um, some of you might want to go look and see if you can find some of cheese. Um, there is one other book, but I couldn't get it for it. Pictures, yes. Oh, Up in Hong Kong, yeah, that's mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to thank Chi for his life and for his work and for his vision and for his generosity. Thank you. production marketing of your artwork to because we don't have colored windows we don't really have stained glass windows anymore in our churches but so many churches have these huge white screens up front you know or white walls 
to just, I could just imagine your, your artwork projected onto those screens that would just Well, right. you know, well that's I think what he was alluding to for in worship, that his work could be. In fact, I worked with Chi, I don't even know her immense, I published with the uh, Calvin Institute for Worship a CD about six years ago called Images of Faith. And you could buy that CD and then it had 100 images in it, one of which was yours, and you could project that. You had rights to project that image. So there, there are, you know, you can go to artists' websites and you can um, email them and ask them for permission and, you know, offer them a little stipend yeah. when you do it. So, uh, you know, his work would definitely project beautifully. Oh, as we see. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Yes. Uh, are you in a relationship with now younger Chinese artists that might be interested in similar <laughs> kinds of ventures as yourself? A and B, do you see any new type of developments or interest in the younger Chinese yeah, uh, In the, since the 1990, middle of the 1990s, we had some uh, while I was a professor in the Cross Seminary, I organized the National uh, Christian Artist uh, Conference. And now it's the uh, fifth now. Yeah, the conference, uh, including some young generations and some uh, artists, uh, they, maybe they are not Christian, but they are interested to do some Christian motive paintings. Yeah, we all invite them to. Uh, to join. Now there is the uh, MT Foundation Art Center still in uh, Beijing. Uh, quite open to organize the national uh, Christian artists to to have yeah the conference meeting. What's the big Asian group? Don't you have we, the big Asian Christian Asian, uh, uh, Christian Art Association that yeah. the most important uh, founder Masao Takanaka. Yeah, he passed away four years ago. So it's very oh. tragic. So now the headquarters uh, before in Kyoto. Yeah, he was a professor in uh, Toshisha University and then moved to Indonesia. Now moved to um, Philippines. The headquarters. I was a former uh, board member for eight years. Yeah, we quite often we very good. Yeah. I think yeah. there are multiple Christian groups that are forming in, in Korea, and yeah. I know that there have been some even exchanges of exhibitions, et cetera, going on. But that's a very good question. You know, what's happening with mentoring the next generation? Very important. Well, thank you all for your attention.